Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio and welcome back to the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Unity. In this series, we're taking 10 videos at about 10 minutes each and we're going to make a simple platformer together. In our first video, we got things set up with gravity, some colliders in our environment, and a player character that interacts with that environment. In this video, we're going to get that character moving and then in the next one, we'll add some jumping. That's where we're headed this time, let's get started. Now Unity has two ways of taking in player input. The first is the new input system, which is a robust, powerful system that can be a little overwhelming and complicated for a beginner. There's also the old system, which works quite well for most circumstances, so long as you're not making a large game where you need to remap keys at runtime. This system's much easier to set up, and so it's where I always like to start with beginners. Up at the top of your screen, if you go to Edit, Project Settings, and then Player, you can scroll down quite a ways to find the active input handling. In newer versions, it will be set to the new system by default, and we just need to change this to work with both. You could also do the old system, but both allows you to have the best of both worlds. This will require you to restart your editor. When things start back up, you'll be in your project settings again, but you can just close those up, and if you want, you can get rid of the input system actions now, as those are just for the new system. At this point, we're ready to actually get our player scripted. So let's go to Create, make a new folder here, and we're going to make this one for all of our scripts. You can then open that up and once again we'll right click, create, and here we're going to make a new mono behavior script. We'll call this one player controller as we'll have both movement and jumping in it. Now just before we open that script I'm just going to click on my player and remember the rigid body is how we're controlling physics and adding things like gravity. At this point we can double click our script in order to open it up. Now typically Unity comes with an IDE or integrated development environment like Visual Studio by default and it supports Visual Studio, Studio Code, as well as JetBrains Rider. That said, if for some reason you didn't get this in the download process, you can go through Unity's site, there's a link in the description, in order to download the version you prefer. When you get back into Unity, you'll just have to click on Unity. Go to Settings or Preferences in some older versions, go to External Tools, and then make sure to link the IDE that you're working with. Now then, let's double click on our script and open up the player controller, and we want to begin by speaking to that rigid body 2D. And let's call this one RB. Now when we get back in our game, we can click on the player, add component, and put the player controller on him. And you'll notice that there's a box here now for his rigid body. We can literally just grab the rigid body component and drag it into that box, and now this script knows which rigid body it's going to be giving instructions to. Now we're going to want to be continuously giving instructions to our rigid body about how to move, so we're going to go into the update method, which runs once per frame, or roughly 60 times per second. Here, we're simply going to tell our rigid body, RB, that its linear velocity, meaning its direction and speed, are going to simply be equal to and for now, let's just put in a new vector, and I'm just going to start with a vector of 1, 0. This will have it moving to the right by default. Now if I go into Unity and hit play, we'll find that he does in fact move at a rightward trajectory, however, he's having some issues. Now to fix that tumbling, we're actually just going to head into our rigid body, open up constraints, and freeze his rotation, so that now he'll just move to the right forever. So next, we want to actually have a realistic falling where there's gravity. So for our y-axis, we're actually going to tell the rigid body that its velocity can just be equal to whatever it decides for the y, meaning it will apply gravity and not try to stop him from falling. When we play the game, you can see this is in action. He moves to the right and then falls much more naturally. Now at this point, we'll decide how to bind our inputs. So we're going to go to Edit, Project Settings, and this time we're going to go to our Input Manager. We can open up the axes, and here you'll find a horizontal button set up. It's called horizontal and currently uses the left and right arrow, or A and D as inputs. So now in our code, we're going to want to capture the input from the player. So let's come up top once more, where we can make a public float variable. A float is just a decimal variable, and we'll call this one horizontal. Now we want to be filling that variable every frame, so we'll head down to update, and here we can just say that horizontal is equal to, we'll type input to talk to our input manager, and we just want to get the axis we just looked at, the one called horizontal. Now if I press left, horizontal will be negative 1, if I press right, it will be 1, if I press nothing, it'll be 0. So now, in our velocity calculation, instead of always moving at a 1, to the right, we can type in this horizontal variable. Now, when we get into Unity, 
We can hit play and we'll notice that when we press the keys, he is in fact moving and this horizontal value is in fact changing depending on the direction we press. Now you may have noticed that our character currently has a little bit of acceleration and deceleration that makes it feel a little bit slippery. If that's not what you want, you could go back into your code and add raw onto our get axis and now we'll hard code those horizontal values to a full integer, negative one, zero, or positive one all the time, and not slowly move through the decimals. Here you can see what that looks like. When I stop pressing the button, he stops immediately. You can choose which feels better for you, whether you want a slightly more slippery version or a harsh start and stop. At this point, we can turn our horizontal float to a private one, as we really don't need to see it in the inspector. Additionally, I'd like to add some more controls to our player, so let's make another public float, this time for speed. We can then head to our velocity calculation and just multiply our horizontal button press by that speed value in order to be able to control just how fast he moves. Before we wrap this up, I'd like to do one last optimization. We're currently doing all of our movement code in update, which is fast, it runs once per frame. However, it's not the most consistent way to do something like movement or other physics interactions for that matter. So we're going to add fixed update, which runs exactly 50 times per second, and this is where we can take our movement logic and put it down here instead. We'll still do our inputs in update as we want to get those as often and fast as possible, but we'll apply the actual motion in fixed update for consistency. Now when we start the game, you'll notice that at first we can press buttons and nothing happens. That's because we're multiplying our speed by zero. However, if I change that value, we can now move at whatever speed we like, and eventually we could even speed him right off the map. Now I realize that a game with nothing but platforms and movement is not the most exciting, and so in the next video, we're gonna add some jumping. Hope to see you in that video. Until then though, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.